Hey guys, what's going on? Wanted to come at you in this nice sunset lighting uh, to talk about uh, two of popular modifications that are done on uh, these, these, these 6O diesels that uh, uh, I don't think are worth it. I don't really think they do what they say they do, and I don't think that they really uh, solve much of anything. First of all, I would like to start off by saying that, you know, this, where I'm filming, obviously, is not mine. It's a public park that I film, that I've uh, filmed at. It's usually pretty empty, and people come here to off-road, and, uh, you know, if you guys are, you know, dickheads who go out and think that this right here is fun, you're the reason why a lot of off-roading stuff gets canceled. And a lot, a lot of off-roading places uh, close and become private, and you guys complain that you can't go off-roading anymore. It's because uh, you guys come out here and think it's fun to do uh, donuts on someone else, on, you know, public property, and then don't think about the fact that someone has to come take care of this now. Or if, you know, on a trail you're putting huge ruts, someone has to go through and fill those ruts back in. And when they don't feel like doing that anymore, it's when it gets shut down. Anyway, off-roading PSA over. Uh, the first mod that I want to talk about is coolant filters. Uh... Coolant filters are a massively popular modification that uh, people do. And they're really just a scam. It's a total waste of money. You're putting unnecessary stuff in your engine bay. You're gonna, you know, you're doing all this work and you're not really getting much filtration for the money that you're putting in and you don't really need a coolant filter, guys. You need to change your coolant. You know, keep up on your service intervals. You know, a lot of guys think that, oh, you know, my coolant should last forever. No, no, it doesn't. And these are the same guys that turn around and go, oh, I don't understand why my oil cooler plugged up and ruptured my EGR cooler. Your coolant breaks down. All fluids break down. You have to change your coolant. So what these coolant filter scam jobs are, you have an external filter that gets mounted here, and you have one hose that taps into one of your heater ports, and the other hose tees into your overflow line here. Well, take a look at, uh, you know, the pathway here that you're really filtering. I'm sure the heater hose that you tap into is the heater hose coming out of the heater core. And then you're tapping into this little itty bitty hose that goes back into your overflow jug. You're filtering a very small portion of your coolant. The majority of your coolant, it's in here. You know, it's not like a set passage where all the coolant has to go through your heater core and then all your coolant has to go through here. No. No, it's, you know, you can see right here, there's no divider here. This is a shared portion. So, you know, your coolant's coming out here This line is a burp. This is just, hey, you know, the coolant's getting sucked in and it's getting flown out. So some of the coolant turns around and goes back to the jug. Not all of it. Same thing with the heater hose, you know, so, whatever. Um, okay, maybe it's, I think it's this line. So it is the line going into the heater core but a small portion of your coolant that comes, that's getting pumped by your um, 
water pump and coming out the thermostat housing goes in there. But at the same time, you're only filtering a small portion of what's already come out of the block. You're not filtering what's going in and running through the system. So yeah, all these coolant overflow or not coolant filter setups, junk. People are, yeah, you know, people will cut them open and say that they found stuff. And I'm sure it filters out, you know, it's a, it's a filter. It's going to filter out some things, but you're not making as big of a dent as you think you are. The second one, and if that first one wasn't controversial enough, this second one will be. The Bulletproof Diesel Remote Oil Cooler Kit. Junk. First of all, Bulletproof Diesel is just overpriced and they're relying on the height for anything other than their head studs and stuff, which for all you know, you could buy head studs and the gaskets and stuff for a lot cheaper. You know, I was looking at, you know, this, like, like I've said before, this thing needs an oil cooler. So, uh, you know, me and my friend are going to be changing out the turbo and the exhaust downpipe and the exhaust and everything. And I was like, oh, maybe while I'm at it, we'll go in there. I mean, taking the turbo out, step one, to getting your oil cooler out. And I decided, you know, maybe I'll wait until next uh after the winter when it starts getting warmer out so but in the meantime i was looking at the bulletproof diesel stuff and the bulletproof diesel stuff they want like 450 dollars just for the egr cooler you can get it for 200 bucks on rock auto same same kit same thing And you know that, so enough on Bulletproof Diesel. The oil cooler kit that they sell, their remote mounted air to oil cooler, it, it solves the issue of relying on your coolant to cool the oil and if you're, and getting rid of the actual oil cooler and everything, but it just creates other issues. You know, now you're going from everything being contained right here to hoses all over the place, filters all over the place, an external oil cooler up front. So, you know, you look at the installation video, you know, there, you know, you take the grill off and you gotta take your AC condenser off and you sandwich the cooler between the AC condenser and the radiator. And then you're running you know, thick rubber hose, but you're just running it up and over here and you're running the other hose up and over and they literally just shove the one hose down between the charge pipe and the bracket for your air filter box. So it's kind of just like, yeah, we got these hoses, let's just shove them out of the plate, out of the way, get them out, you know, out of our face. And I'm just, it's, it's going to cause other issues, you know. There isn't anything about how long these hoses last. Uh, you know, you're dealing with chafe issues, rub issues. On top of that, they have two filters. I think it's like a bypass filter and something else. Two, two oil filters, essentially. And it's one per end wheel well, and they just sit right in there. So everything that gets kicked off your wheels is getting kicked all over your oil filter and the lines and the fittings and, you know, up here in the Northeast or anywhere that you have rust, you're gonna get rust on that stuff. So uh, it, it solves the issue of ruptured oil coolers but it creates new problems that not enough people have experienced yet for it to be a real issue. Now, you know, for all I know, the, you know, the kit can last forever and the lines can never have issues and blah, blah, blah. But I'd rather just not take the chance. And again, 
in all honesty, everyone complains about, oh, the oil coolers on these are so weak and they rupture and they blow up and they clog and they're so weak and they're so bad. But again, if you just change your coolant when you're supposed to, it's not as big of a deal. But again, it's also like everything else on a vehicle. Stuff's going to wear out. Everything on a vehicle can wear out. Doesn't matter what it is. Fluids, parts, metal. Everything wears out. There's nothing that you're going to put on your truck that's going to last forever until the end of time and never have issues. So for me personally, I'm just going to stick with the stock setup. Uh, and that's that. That's my opinions on the coolant filter and the Bulletproof Diesel external oil filter. You know, I'm not saying you guys shouldn't get them. If you guys want them, get them. Put them on your vehicle. I'm just not going to. So, there's that. Um, again, update or side, pro, side update on the truck. Uh, you know, truck's driving really good. Uh, again, we are, step one is we are going to get the stock suspension back in it, get everything back to stock ride height. I'm going to do a service on the differentials and the transfer case, get all those fluids changed out and freshened up. And then... After the winter, we're gonna get into doing uh, our oil cooler, our EGR cooler, we'll do the blue spring mod, and we may also replace the IPR valve while we're in there. Um, I am also going to be replacing this Bully Dog air intake with just the stock intake. Um, I found one on Marketplace for a pretty good price. Just because, uh, you know, this one's nice, but the filter is very specific. Um, it is just a cone K&N style filter, but uh, I haven't been able to really track down a replacement filter that's the right size. And in all honesty, it isn't that different from the stock filter anyway. So we're gonna get the stock filter in there. Um, again, I'll just save that for when I'm doing all the engine based stuff. But there you go guys, and I'll see you later.